God is good. And all the time, we are so thankful that God draws us together. Uh, One of the few occasions I get to wear red. Um, That Pentecost and Reformation, unless there's a pastoral installation or ordination. Hmm, maybe a year from now, Uh, God willing, in in regards to that. But again, we celebrate uh, the sending of the Holy Spirit upon us. Uh, I will be preaching on the psalm text. We are not reading it today, but Luann is singing it today. Uh, So you will hear that, and then I will read a little bit of it uh, before we have the message this day. Uh, Thereby, if you notice the bulletin cover, uh, that psalm is a very familiar one in the the pro-life, the right to life uh, movement. that he knows our, our inner being, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, that, that I'm not reading that part of the text today, but that is in, in Psalm 139. Uh, but I want you to note also that as it speaks to us individually, it also, I, I want you to think in, in regards as I preach that, because I will speak to it, Think of us as the church, as this congregation that we are fearfully and wonderfully made because we celebrate the Pentecost today. We celebrate the the pouring out of the Holy Spirit in the formation of Christ's church of which we are a part of today. Uh, So keep that in mind uh, as I proclaim the message. Uh, Please sign up for the uh, Fourth Friday Fellowship Dinner. Uh, it's on the uh, bulletin board in the narthex so that they have a, a count. Uh, the handbell group, the Valley River Ringers, is that correct? I got it right. The Valley River Ringers will be after dinner. Uh, so they have to, they get to eat and then play rather than play and then eat. Uh, so so th- uh, please sign up for that. I do want to give you some information. Uh, we prayed for uh, President, District President Rocky's wife last week. Uh, she had a series of seizures throughout the week. They were happening like every 15 minutes. Um, finally, they moved her to Shands in Gainesville. They could not get her to Mayo where she had her surgery. They got her to Shands in Gainesville. Uh, they... Uh, messed with the medications, uh, they were seeing some signs of improvement. Then uh, Friday morning, they had made an, another adjustment, and she hasn't had a seizure since. Uh, so uh, they were hopefully going to be able to go home either yesterday or today. Uh, but again, she still will be, uh, still a long, long road to go for her, but we praise, praise God for, for those small steps in her life. And also, we returned to our, full, after Sally and I spent some time away, we returned a full schedule of all of our Bible classes and everything uh, this week. Uh, so uh, make sure that uh, you find those opportunities and uh, join us uh, as we gather together. So as God has gathered us in this place this day, uh, he, he wants to give us his gifts, the gift of his word, the gift of Christ's body and blood in, with, and under the bread and the wine, but also the gift of his people. And so as we gather together, we take some time in prayerful meditation. Let the Spirit guide that prayer for you. Uh, Use a hymn verse. uh, Meditate on Psalm 139. Uh, We do so as the candles are being lit and the prelude is being played.
Indeed, the Holy Spirit has been poured out upon us as we were brought into God's family as his children through the waters of holy baptism, in which we remember this day as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand for the singing of the hymn.
On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. We pause now for silent confession, being reminded where we have erred and strayed from God's purposes, where we have fallen short of his glory. And it's in these moments also that we are reminded what God does for us as he draws us into his family through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We bow our heads. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. Upon this, your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
The Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and you will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I prophesied there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews upon them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophet, Prophecy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken. I will do it, declares the Lord. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitudes, multitudes came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in their own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are you not, not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya beyond to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arab, Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They were filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the leaven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words, for these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declared, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on earth below, 
blood and fire and vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you took the fibers of my being and knit them to your will before my birth. You molded and predestined before I drew a breath and you gave me all I need to walk this earth you know what I'll say before I say Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. 
And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. The congregation may be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our text is in Psalm 139. If you choose to look it up uh, in the Bible or in your, on your device, uh, I am reading specifically verses 1 through 7, but also 13 through 16 inform the message this day. To the choir master, a psalm of David. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hands upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? The lessons today are about relationship. Not purely and only the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ and the triune God, but the relationship that we have with one another as Christ followers, as we are the church. And especially as you hear this Psalm 139, when you get to the... Uh, we are wonderfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. We typically think of a newborn. We think of that, that baby inside the mother's womb, the relationship that the mother has with that child in that moment. But think in the same, same way that God has that relationship with each one of us, but God also has that relationship with the church. And so now I want, as we think about those relationships I want you to know that in this text, we are going from a hoped-for dream to an in-person reality. Isn't that what happens in the normal gestation? That the mother and the father, it's a hoped-for dream, not knowing what is going to happen with this little child in those nine months before it is born, but it, it, it's that hoped-for dream, and then finally that day arrives in the and the baby shoots on out, it becomes an in-person reality. Ta-da! Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but, but as, as that, and again, as I started preparing this message, I'm also thinking about where we are as All Saints Lutheran Church, getting ready for Vicar Tim. We are in the midst of a hope for a dream, aren't we? And in a few weeks, it's going to be an in-person reality. And then the weeks after that, and the weeks after that, and the years after that, it, that, that relationship does, doesn't just take place in those few days. There are some humble beginnings. Any, any relationship that you are in, you know, when Sally and I first dated, um, the first time we met one another didn't go very well. You have some humble beginnings in the early stages of, re of a relationship, whether it be in that dating relationship, whether it be parent and child, whether it be pastor and congregation. There are some very humble beginnings. And as you find out, there's humbling along the way. Because you finally begin to get to that point, Mel, you and I have been together 
a, a long time. You get to that point of being known, don't you? Me knowing you and you knowing me. So, so you have those humble beginnings, but you finally reach that point where you live in that being known. And in that being known, there's some, some sort of accountability in those who know you. You get this greater sense of yourself, but you also get the greater sense, the, the other person gets a greater sense of yourself likewise. And they begin to, you begin to know, and they begin to know some of your innermost thoughts and feelings, your innermost heart and mind. And if it truly is a, an accountable relationship, if it truly grows throughout the years, you begin to uncover and understand the motives and movement of your behavior, and they begin to understand the motives and movement of your behavior. And then David reminds us of the relationship with God. The opening verse, O oh Lord, you have searched me and have known me. O oh Lo oh Lord, you have searched me and have known me. Your frame, my frame, has never been hidden from him. From the day you and I were conceived, and even before that, God knew everything about us. Your frame and my frame has never been hidden from him. And he beholds your and mine, each one of us, our inward substance. Not only the, the stuff that's in here, but the stuff that's in here and the stuff that's in here. And God discerns that. And God's discerning, as we hear in this text, is intricately woven to know every bit and piece, every jot and tittle, every hair on your head, or at least every hair that was on your head. But knowing that, knowing that his discerning is intricately woven, it, it becomes very weighty if you begin to try to think through the mind of God. And David even says that there are times when you feel hemmed in. Now, being hemmed in is, is a very good thing, as David relates, but Typically, when our ears hear being hemmed in, it's usually a negative experience, isn't it? We feel trapped. We feel cornered. As, as we are hemmed in, we become subject to the fear that God truly knows me. And, and as he truly knows me, as we are being truly known, can you imagine being so close to God that he knows your thought before you think it? He knows your action before you do it. He knows your heart before you feel it. Being so close can leave us burdened. Being so close to God can cause us to be bound by our conscience. And there we are lingering with our own thoughts of guilt as we confessed earlier this morning. We're lingering with our thoughts of guilt of the things that we have done and the things that we have left undone. 
As Paul says, the things that I want to do are the things that I don't do, and the things that I don't want to do are the things that I keep on doing. And somehow, as you're struggling with this, you get this, this urge to escape being noticed. You're hoping that no one else sees that you're doing those things. Because you're hoping if, if they don't notice you doing those things, then maybe God won't notice you doing those things. David knows better, and we know better. Where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I flee from your presence? God's presence is not in the past or the future tense. God doesn't stand before us and go, well, this is what I did, so you better follow me. God doesn't say, oh, this is what I will, will do, so you better follow me. No, brothers and sisters in Christ, God simply is. He's the great I am. He's intimately involved in your life. He's intimately involved in my life. He's intimately involved in the life of this congregation. He's intimately involved in the life of his church. We know that is true because next week we will hear, we will hear the, the creation account. God was intimately involved. He spoke the word and it came into being. He was intimately involved with the children of Israel as he led them on their various journeys, finally leading them into the promised land. And even when they continued to mess up, he was still with them. He was intimately involved with them every step of the way, ultimately where he showed himself to us, God with us. He became so intimately involved with the world that Jesus took on our human flesh and became one of us to experience life, to minister to us, to teach us, to die for us. And to then rise again to new life so that we may rise to new life. And so God still is intimately involved with us today. He works in our darkest of places. And when God shows up, he pierces that darkness. Because he seeks you and me. He seeks each one of us out so that we might know him. Because he knows us. He forms. He frames. He fashions your and my earthly being. He forms, he frames, and he fashions our eternal self. He forms, he frames, and he fashions his bride, the church. God's intimacy is there as he is forming us in the womb. God's intimacy is there even way before that. But even more importantly, God's intimacy is here from this day forward. And God's presence is inescapable. He abides with us. He abides with us each and every day. He abides with, with us in each and every moment of our life. It's his awesome and incomprehensible goodness. Incomparable with anything else that we could ever know. David knew that. How marvelous are your works. 
how marvelous is your creative goodness. How different. How strikingly remarkable, God, that you are, that you are willing to take care of me. And how profoundly personal he is. But it is never private. Because as, as he loves us, as he works with us, as he pours his Holy Spirit out upon us, it is so that the world may know that, that he is the one who cares for us. It's beyond comprehension. And it's a matter for us to continue to grow in faith. And so we simply proclaim soli deo gloria. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars at night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will. people say amen. amen Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for a plentiful harvest, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, and the dying, especially Stan, Martha, Andy, Debbie, and Jay, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For an increase of the Spirit and the work of witness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the unity in the congregations and for the unity of the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a spirit of repentance and renewal, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for a spirit of reconciliation and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And thanksgiving for those who have gone before, and for our faithfulness unto death, that we may receive the crown of everlasting life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen.